In this video we're going to look at how to do an Euler transform. We're going to look at this from an aeronautical perspective, but it can be viewed far more generally. We're just going to learn the basic procedure involved in obtaining the Euler um, transformation matrix. So, what we're fundamentally doing here is we're taking something in Earth axes, which we're going to call XE, and we're transforming it into body axes, so that would be associated with our aircraft, and we're going to call this X, and we do this with a series of rotations, and we have to do these rotations in a very specific order. We start with the yaw, which we're going to denote by this angle phi, so yaw is the aircraft in this sense, then we're going to go to the pitch, and we're going to give that the angle theta pitch, is going to be in this sense and then finally we're going to do roll which is going to be in phi and that is the aircraft in this sense we do the transformations in this order so let's start by doing the yaw transform now yaw is in this sense so you're rotating about the z axis this is going to be your z this is going to be your X, this is going to be your Y. Let's put the Z going into the page as so. We've got X going that way, Y going that way. So we can do the transform as so. We've got Y, E coming down here. And then we've got X, E across here. Let's do a rotation. So let's rotate X1 like that. We have to squeeze in here. It gets quite messy sometimes. Y1 in there. And we can do basic trigonometry to break these down. So we can say we've got, you see it's a rotation in phi in here as so. So we've got sine here. Down here we should have a cosine. Then we've got a cos here and a sine going in this direction. Now we can of course um, write x1 in terms of sine and cos of xe so we could say that x1 is equal to xe cos phi plus ye sine phi y1 equal to minus xe sine phi plus ye cos and we've not changed z so Z1 is simply ZE. Now this can of course be written in terms of a matrix. Uh, well, matrices and vectors, so you should know how to rewrite this. So it's nice and simple, as so. And then we will get this matrix. It's going to be cos, then sine, zero, just writing this equation out, um, minus sine, cos 0, 0, 0, 1, we've not changed z, and of course the vector in here is y, z, e, here, okay? If you multiply this out, you will of course get back that expression there. Now we can say that this bit here is x1, we're going to call this t1, which is our first transform, and we're going to call this xe, which is our um, earth axis system. Now, if we get another bit of paper, we can go on and do the next transformation. The next transformation is a pitch transformation using the order that I gave you before. So let's look at the pitch transformation. So we're looking in Y, so we're going to have this, like so, X1, We've got Z1, we're going to be rotating round like so, Z2, and then rotate the X to get um, to X2. So we're transforming X1 into X2, exactly the same thing. You're going to have well, X1 cos theta, here you're going to have X1 sine theta, should be able to do this no problem. Here's going to be Z1 cos, and lastly, 
z1 sine theta. Um, should probably mark in the angle that we're going through, which is the angle theta. And of course, you can rewrite this as x2 equals x1 cos theta minus z1 sine theta. It's quite repetitive, but at least it's simple. And z2 x1 sine theta z1 cos theta. Now I can do exactly the same thing, rewriting this as x2 y2 z2. So basically what we're saying is what matrix transforms these this system into the this system so that ones the transforms the x ones into the x twos. So cos theta zero minus sine theta. If you're familiar with robotics, these matrices should be obvious. Theta, and of course you've got in here this time we've got x one, y one, z one, and we can name these in exactly the same way. X two, I've got t two, and then this is x one. Now, we can go on on another piece of paper, we can do the final transform, which is our transform. We do the roll transform in exactly the same way, nice and simple. So, roll, let's call it the roll transform. So we're going to look at the x-axis, so we've got z2 and we've got y2 going into the page like so um, let's do the rotation let's rotate it this way and notice we've got just y and then z this is our final um, state and we're rotating through five to get to where we want to be and you can break it down in exactly the same way that's going to be y2 sine um, this is going to be y2 cos, you're going to have in here, you're going to have a z2 cos, uh, finally, end of that, and a z2 sine as so. Now break it down exactly the same way, uh, sorry, x equals x2 y equals y2 cos phi plus z2 sine z equals minus y2 sine phi probably try doing these for yourself um, it maybe looks more easy when I do it and then rewrite this in exactly the same way um, we get the matrix 1 0 0 I'm going too fast just pause and you'll be able to keep up. It should be very simple what's happening now. But when you come and do it on your own, it becomes slightly more tricky. And again, this is our X, that's our final one. We're gonna call this transformation three, and we're gonna call this X2. So we've now got a series of transforms, all right? If we put all these transforms together, we can find a matrix that does everything for us. So, we've got, if you look backwards, we've got an equation x1 equals t1 xe, that was our first transform. Then we got x2 equals t2 x1. Then we got our final thing x, we're going from this to this. We've got the x equals t3, um, then x2. So we can basically, if you watch this, we can put that in there, and then we can put that in there, and combine all of the equations in that way. Hence, the final thing you're gonna get is that x is equal to t3, t2, t1, x, e. And you can call this, say you call that e, for your Euler matrix. Now, if you multiply all of these transforms, this T3, and if you go back, you'll see T2 and T1, multiply all of these together, and you should 
if you do it correctly you may want to do this for practice you should get this as your final matrix it's a pain to multiply out and this matrix will transform between the two axis systems okay so that's how you derive the Euler transformation matrix um, it's actually quite simple to do hopefully this video has been helpful to you and thank you for watching